That's what you are going to talk about, and your talk is uh, titled Deep Boxing Maker Projects. And uh, you will share what you have learned with your projects and what's this, the mystery be behind that. Is that right? Yeah, maybe I won't have any answers, but uh, I want also to share like the questions that I have and that I have faced and maybe start the conversation. Wonderful. Yep. Thank you, Leslie. So yeah. it's your stage. Okay, uh, thanks all for coming. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm like super nervous. So, yeah. Uh, as I said, my background is in design, but I'm self-taught in electronics, and I work mostly helping people build um, like artwork or interactive experiences, be that for installations or advertisement projects or uh, startups or whatever. Um, but the first thing is like I don't want to say, hey, uh, black boxes are terrible. I have an iPhone and I love it. I don't want it to be like. I don't want to have to learn how to use it. I like the fact that it's like hiding and abstract, abstracting a lot of uh, its issues for me. Um, not only uh, in terms of usability, but also in terms of like protecting the device itself. If you have like uh, something that's open, it not only it can endanger like the user, but also the the object. So there's like a great use for black boxes, but. They're also, as technology gets miniaturized, it's uh, really a uh, pain in the ass to try to learn how things work, uh, to tear them apart, and, and et cetera. And being someone that, uh, that is self-taught, it's super frustrating to tear something apart and have something that's glued or epoxied or something that's not accessible or not clear for you to, uh, to uh, understand. Uh, but then there are like um, other interesting questions that is uh, where where do you draw the line? Okay, this is abstraction enough and this is not uh, abstracted enough. This is too closed. Um, I have some friends that they have the Fairphone and I think it's a really nice project. But also it's arguable that it's just a lot of mini black boxes instead of like a really open phone. Uh, but then... I, I don't think that's, uh, there's an answer to that. It's just an interesting discussion to start on like project by project. And then this is something that I always had in the back of my mind, starting projects and um, researching. Uh, I came upon this really nice uh, dichotomy of um, art and technology that could be used to democratize culture and like uh, share information but up until like maybe 10 years ago mostly it's used as commercial exploitation for you to like buy more devices or consume uh, consume uh, pop culture and etc but then there's a really nice niche like within the maker culture that's a uh, like safe environment for you to do testing uh, where not everything has to be perfect and generally it's not, it's generally like always almost broken but it's a really interesting space for experimentation and um, it's really nice that it's open for non-experts such as me, like someone that's just curious and wants to put two f interesting things that he saw together and uh, see what happens. Uh, and then together with this, it's um, another really important thing is like the having access to information in non-academic context. So like YouTube or you go to a museum and you see how uh, an old technology works or you buy like an evaluation kit or you watch a tutorial, etc. So I think these together with maker culture and um, uh, like they, they really allow for that vision of technology as uh, distribution of information because uh, like if you think about it like everybody has like access to most of humanity's information in their pockets but most people don't use it uh, so it's not something that's really embedded in the culture but there are these niches such as these events, maker cultures and workshops and hackathons and fab labs and etc. where these uh, things happen. 
And I just, me personally, I didn't actually know that that's something that I wanted, but as I started working on my projects, it's uh, something that I sub subconsciously started doing that is starting to make it as transparent as possible because that's how I wish that things were done when I saw them. So this is an installation that I did uh, in 2010. It's just basically a, um, a controller for LED strips, but it's done in a way that's open that you can see and try to correlate how uh, the installation is controlled by, by the device. Uh, this uh, project like that I did with a friend of mine, it's basically a blank comic strip distributors for drawing workshops. So you would go there and you would uh, press a button and it would uh, spit out a piece of paper and it would cut it out for you. And we thought that it was really, really important that um, like the children could see the mechanisms, not only because of like the comic factor of like a, a weird machine from comics books, but also to get like the head of the, the, the kid going and, and it's like nurturing the imagination. But then there are like some issues as like, if you put your finger in the open space, it might uh, cut your finger off, I don't know. Um, but also, so it's like a relation of like, you can hurt the machine and the machine can hurt you, uh, which isn't really something that you, you see when dealing with like your Epson printer. It's like just really a plastic case and you don't, have to understand it or deal with it um, um, in a more in a way that has like more meaning. But it's uh, really nice to know that uh, they really like kind of like respect the machine, and it 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 was really a successful project that toured uh, Brazil, which is the country I'm I'm from. And then there is this other project that uh, it's based on a little bit. It was an an installation where they wanted to buy uh, little bits, which are like small magnetic uh, electronic kits. Uh, and they wanted to buy some and put it on a wall that's like uh, about this big. But little bits are like really, really small. They're like about three by four centimeters. And then my friend said, hey, uh, instead of buying it, let's build some, but in a larger scale. And it was a really interesting experiment because the circuits were really exposed uh, so like you could only you, you could no, you could not only like touch the potentiometer you could also touch the circuit in itself uh, and it was in an unsupervised space and after like a few days uh, what happened was like the circuits they started breaking because um, you like people started touching it, them everywhere and like tearing things apart but then um, uh, what the museum did was like they had some monitors that would guide the the, the children f uh, through the experiences um, so that 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 issue basically stopped and uh, it, it it was it's like if you make it too open and don't give any guidance then it's just a mess but if you like give some guidance and then the, the children can start to um, learn and um, start getting the feeling of the, the project. So basically these are some projects that uh, I did without really consciously knowing what I wanted. And then uh, last year I started a project that's based on core rope memories that's called uh, Lena Byte. That was just like an active exercise of trying to make something as clear as possible out of something that's usually super looks super complicated but it, it's actually simple because core memories uh, the original ones they have like a, a bunch of wires bundled together so it looks like just a rat's nest and what uh, what Linobyte is is just eight uh, set of eight bits so it's eight bytes uh, encoded in ASCII and then eight characters characters uh, displayed and they would turn on one at a time like eight like the eight uh, coils and the character and then the next set of eight coils and then the next character. So you can start to like correlate that like, okay, this is a set of information that's dis displayed here. And then you start moving it faster and faster. 
until it's like so fast that you can not even see that it's blinking. So like you kind of like teach uh, multiplexing without even mentioning multiplexing. Uh, and with regards to the hardware, like I use magnetic connectors. So it's like kind of like pulls itself into position like the extinct uh, MagSafe connector. And also uh, I try to do like the, the electronics as close as possible as if they would be their own uh, block diagram uh, embedded in the in the PCB. So like it's it's uh, Linobyte is in one of the booths here. So there's like a lot of people that they come and they try to like figure out what goes on. And sometimes they get it uh, perfectly. And sometimes they just need like a tip. They ask, oh, but what is this or what is that? And then everything like kind of like falls together. So um, in that sense, it's it's really satisfying and yeah. You know, and also trying to make like the not the device also it in itself, but also like the process of making it as transparent as possible. So I try to um, start publishing like uh, how things are assembled, designed, and built. And it's really nice to hear like people say, "Hey, I lost the uh, fear of soldering surface mount devices because of watching like a video." You know, oh, oh, I didn't even know you could solder uh, magnets and still have them have some uh, magnetivity. Um, yeah, so basically this is uh, like some thoughts and processes that uh, I've been having and that I wanted to share and maybe start a conversation about that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know where else uh, to start. So that's it. Thanks. <laughs>